is falling down on me. Thank you, Jesus. I feel the rain tonight. I feel the rain. The rain of the power of the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. I've got the Holy Ghost down in my soul. Just like a Bible says. Oh, yes. I've got the Holy Ghost down in my soul. Just like the Bible says. Well, I've been to the water. Oh, yes. I've been baptized. Just like the Bible, just like the Bible says. Think about it. I got that Holy Ghost down in my heart. Just like the Bible says. I got the Holy Ghost down in my heart. Just like the Bible says. Well, I've been to the water and I've been back. My soul got happy and I'm satisfied I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now oh, yes. Just like the Bible Oh yes, just like the Bible Oh yes, just like the Bible says Well, I've got it I've got it Oh yes, I do I've got it I've got it there's something about the power of the Holy Ghost I can't explain, but I know I got it Oh yes, brothers, sisters, I got it Hallelujah I got it, I got it I got it, yes, I got it Listen, there's something about the power of the Holy Ghost I can't explain it, but I got it I got it Tonight, I feel it. I feel it. Oh, yes, there's something about the power of the Holy Ghost. I can't explain it, but I feel it. Oh, yes, I feel it. You can have it if you want it. You can have it if you want it. There's something about the power of the Holy Ghost. Can't explain it, but you can have it if you want it. You can have it, you can have it if you want it. You can have it if you want it. There's something about the power of the Holy Ghost. I can't explain it. You can have it if you want it. You need it. Oh yes, you do. You need it. You need it, you need it, oh yes. There's something about the power of the Holy Ghost. I can't explain it, but I've got it, you need it, yes sir. Hallelujah, I've got it. Oh yes, I've got it. Hallelujah, I've got it, I've got it. There's something about the power of the Holy Ghost. I can't explain it, but I've got it. Oh, yes, I've got it. Can't explain it, but I can tell you this, I've got it. Hallelujah. Praise Him. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. You can have it if you oh, want. Oh, Jesus. Thank you. How many of you got it tonight? Lift your voices and give Him praise. Hallelujah, Lord. We love you. We exalt you. Thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want it. I want a little bit more of it. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Clap your hands unto him and give him praise. He is worthy. Amen. Praise God. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. How many of you have something you want God to do for you? Amen. Hallelujah. Just about everybody. 
Amen. He's a healer. He's a way maker. He's a provider. Let's just pray for all of our needs tonight. Father, we come before you tonight and we pray, Lord, you know every need that is in the house. You know every hand that has been raised. Those that are sick and afflicted in body, I just pray tonight, Lord, that you would heal them and strengthen them. Lift them up in the power of your might. For you said, by your stripes we are healed tonight. We claim your healing virtue and we claim your power tonight. Lord, those that need wisdom and knowledge and direction. I pray you said the steps of the righteous are ordered of you. We pray order our steps aright tonight, God. Lead us and guide us and direct us in all that you would have us to do. Let your glory fill our hearts. Let your name be exalted. Let your name be lifted up. I pray, God, let each of us be a soul winner. Help us to be a light that shines in darkness. Help us, oh Lord, to do your work and to do your will. I pray meet every need that's in this house tonight. Let your glory be upon each and every one of us. I give you praise and I give you thanks tonight in the wonderful name of Jesus. And everybody shout amen. Amen. Give God the glory and give him the praise. Sing. 
God. Let's sing verse 1 again. Let's bless him tonight. Oh, Lord, my God. Think about it tonight. When I in awesome wonder consider all the words thy hands have made. You see them tonight? I hear the rolling thunder Thy power throughout The universe This, this lift our voices in one accord to the King of Glory tonight now Who sings my soul? that praise tonight Jesus you are great how great you are tonight yes, Father Jesus, bless him, bless I love him. you I praise you I worship you how great you are in my life tonight Jesus hallelujah then sings my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou art can we just take a moment and tell him how great he is come on tell your God how great he is you are great God. You are the awesome God. You have all power in heaven and earth. You're the wonderful, the counselor. You're the mighty God. You're the everlasting Father. I praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Amen, amen, amen. My soul sings how great he is today. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We're going to receive our offering. Ask you to prepare to give. Brother Darrell's coming. Amen. And want to quickly remind you that, amen, brother and sister Putnam will be with us Thursday night in service. Amen. Didn't he do a marvelous job this morning? To God be the glory. Amen. Enjoyed the service very, very much. Amen. And they will be with us on Thursday evening, and we will be doing a split session. Sister... Putnam will be speaking to the ladies, and Brother Putnam will be speaking to the men, and we're going to have a special time, amen, praise God, looking forward to that. Friday night, amen, at 7 o'clock, it'll be a casual night, you won't have to get dressed up if you don't want to, amen, and we're going to, Brother Putnam is going to share his slides from Israel's the trip that we did together to Israel, amen, related to the Bible, and I'm sure you'll Amen. Be inspired by all that you see and hear. Amen. Hallelujah. What really is amazing to me is I don't know how you can go to Israel, see all those sites, and then come some folks say he isn't real. Amen. Living proof that my God is real. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's real in my soul. Amen. Praise God. So that, that'll be Friday night and then they... We'll be back with us on Sunday morning and Sunday night next week. We're just going to have a great time in the Lord. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Looking forward to God, what God has here tonight. Would you stand? Let us pray over the offering as they sing. You can march and come and give your offering to the Lord. Father, I thank you for all your wonderful blessings. Thank you for your, your spirit that is among us tonight. Thank you for what you did this morning. Thank you for another opportunity to be in thy house and just to praise and to magnify and to glorify your holy name. I pray tonight, Lord, bless the gift and the giver. Rebuke the devourer, I pray. Pour out a blessing upon your people. In the wonderful name of Jesus, I pray. And everybody say amen. Amen. As they sing, will you march and come and give to the Lord? Praise him. worship you tonight hallelujah i need you more than i've ever needed you before hallelujah aren't you glad he's a present help in the time of trouble he's my refuge and my strength hallelujah clap your hands one more time under the lord praise god we're excited tonight to have brother and sister putnam with us 
I'm just going to get out of the way and turn the rest of the service over to Brother Putnam. Would you welcome him as he comes? God bless you, Brother Putnam. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I don't know about you, but I need him more. Amen. You may be seated. I believe that our God is absolutely omniscient, which means that he knows everything. Everything. He knows all about us. He knows our greatest achievements. He knows our greatest failures. He just knows. Amen. I also believe that our God is omnipotent, that he's all-powerful. Anybody believe that in here? That he's all-powerful. Amen. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has never been sick. He's never been on vacation. He is always the same. He's still a healer. He's still a deliverer. He's still our Savior. Amen. And I also know that he is omnipresent now I don't want to cross any theological hairs here tonight and I'm certainly not your pastor but you know it's just dawned to me have you ever I know I've been guilty of saying this boy did we have a move of God have you ever heard that statement have you ever made that statement Boy, did we have a move of God. Now, I believe he's omnipresent, which means that he is every place at the same time. You believe that? So how is something that is every place at the same time, how does he move? Did you ever think about that? He's always the same. He's always there. He was there when I woke up this morning. He'll be there all during the night when you and I sleep. And God, hopefully anyways, will all wake up tomorrow morning. Amen. But you see, I think what's happening. You know, the Bible tells us in the last days that knowledge is going to increase. And certainly it really has. I mean, uh, in the medical field, if, if you went to school five years ago, you're probably out, just old hat now. Because things are constantly changing in technology and so forth. Knowledge will increase and it has. Uh, does, does anybody have one of these uh, on you tonight? I, I mean, if you, this is, a, this is a, uh, a cell phone. Does anybody have a cell phone? Come on, raise your hands if you have a cell phone. Look at this. Come on, keep your hand up. I think that's about 100% in this room. What did we do 30 years ago? It's, It's scary when you have two kids that are sitting next door and they're texting like mad and they're texting to each other. But now, now they tell me this is a smartphone. And always before, I had dumb phones. But now, this dumb guy has a smartphone. This phone is smarter than me. Now, I, do you realize, in, within the confines of this little frame here, you're holding in your hands, if you've got one of these smartphones, the ability to tap into about two-thirds of man's information on earth. Knowledge shall increase. Right now, 
if I'm hooked up with the right satellite up here, I could, you know, I could just, and you can show a, a movie in here. Come on. You can show the news in here. Where's all this coming from? Do you realize right now in this room, there are signals that are going back and forth in this room. And all you got to do is to have the right instrument tuned into the right channel and you get the right picture. Is it dawning on any of you yet? It's not that God moves. It's when you and I get in the right attitude and the right unity with the Spirit of God at the right time, and all of a sudden we connect, which has always been here. Amen. And you and I all know that there's some services that, man, we wish we would have every week. And then there's some we go, what happened? And the what happened is, is not God's fault. The what happened is, when you walked through the door today, the enemy reminded you of your bills you got to pay. The enemy reminded you you got to go to that work job tomorrow. The enemy reminded you and gets you distracted from what God wants to bless you with today. Amen. Because God does not change. It's you and I that change. I think the Lord said to his group in the boat, he said, let's go to the other side. Isn't that what he said? He got them all on the boat. He said, let's go to the other side. He's in the boat. Everybody say, he's in the boat. Let's go to the other side. They get out in the middle of that lake of Sea of Galilee, and a quick storm comes up. The waves are beating on that boat, and all of those real spiritual giants are on there with him said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Do you realize that there could have been a greater miracle that day rather than Jesus standing up and saying, peace be still? There could have been a greater miracle. You know what that greater miracle would have been? If they would have just said, everything's all right. No matter how much the water is lapping up against the boat, no matter how much the wind is blowing, no matter how bad the storm is, my God is on board this boat, and he already said, let's go to the other side, and what he said is going to happen, so why worry and fret? Just stay on board and wait out the storm and let God bless you. Amen. And I don't know, I gotta be, I'm I'm gotta be honest. Oh God, what's going on? <laughs> Come on. Let's be honest. We're human beings. You know, we get flustered. We get to worrying. Some lady said one time, said, Don't tell me worrying don't work. She said, 95% of the things I worry about never come to pass. Don't tell me it don't work. Well, my Lord. Amen. Amen. Stand with me. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to a very, very familiar scripture found in the book of Deuteronomy. It's Deuteronomy chapter 6, and it's verse 4. It is the... The most important scripture to a Jewish person in the Bible. Matter of fact, I want you to read it with me. It's on the screen. You've got it in your hand. Now, I want us to read it with gusto. Anybody know what gusto means? Forte. 
I want you to read it with authority. You know, God's given you authority. Amen. Amen. I had the privilege back in 2000 to go to Ethiopia. And Brother Billy Cole, bless his soul, he uh, told all of us, 35 members of the evangelistic team, he says, now I want you to stand on the platform and just go like this, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And I thought, well, you know, you know, that doesn't sound hard. But you know what? It wasn't about this. It was about the faith that went with this. We stood out there and went in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And I mean to tell you, I witnessed with my own eyes, 55,000 people received the Holy Ghost in one service. I don't think you heard what I said. 55,000 people received the Holy Ghost in one service. I was commenting on to Billy Cole afterwards. I said, Billy Cole, thank you. I said, I, you know, I, I, I was a doubter at first. You know, what's this going to do for me? He said, Brother Putnam, you go home and do that in your church. And you watch what happens. I came right back from Ethiopia that first Sunday. I stood at the pulpit at the end of the altar call. I went, I never had anybody come up front. I said, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Six people got the Holy Ghost just like that. Amen. 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 Because there's something about taking authority. Now, folks, don't get nervous here. I know where I'm going here. We're reading together. Verse 4 of Deuteronomy 6. And we're reading it with forte and gusto. Here we go. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Say it again. Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God is one Lord. Verse 5 says, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with a part of thine heart, with some of thy soul, and with three quarters of thy might. Isn't that what your Bible says? What am I missing here? What am I missing here? And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. I want to speak to you tonight, preach tonight on this subject, the Shema. The spirit of giving all. The Shema. The spirit of of giving all. Pastor, would you pray tonight in Jesus? Hallelujah. Lord, we love you tonight. We lift our voices. God, we praise the Lord. I just Thank ask God for your touch and anointing. Just Let's ask God Putnam for your help and strength. Words, Hallelujah, God. Jesus. I love you and I thank you, God. We love you. We in thank Jesus' you. name. Jesus. In Jesus' name. name. Amen. Amen. Now somebody clap your hands and thank God. Amen, that you understand what that scripture is all about. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Shake somebody's hand, look him in the eye, and say he's going to talk about the spirit of giving all. That's what I'm going to talk about. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Hebrew. The verse, this verse of scripture is known to the Jews as the Shema. It is the central, single most important prayer in all of Judaism. This is often the very first scripture that a Jewish child will ever learn. And during its recitation in the synagogue, Orthodox Jews take great care in pronouncing each word carefully as they cover their eyes with their right hand 
And at least twice a day, each morning and each evening, this six-word prayer is recited. After reciting it, there is a pause, and then Deuteronomy 6, 5 through 9 is then recited. And thou shalt love the Lord, thy God, with all thine heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thy house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. Amen. Now, church... What these verses of scriptures are stressing is the commandment to love. To love the Lord our God with all of our being. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Now I know that that's very easy for us to quote. But you and I both know that it takes some effort to practice. Hello? Hello? You see, the Shema is the witness of God's oneness. I am so thankful that I understand who God is. Amen. I understand that he's the Father. I understand that he's the Son. I understand that he's the Holy Spirit. And I understand that his name is Jesus Christ. He is manifested in several different ways. But you see, the response to this witness of God's oneness uh, should be that of our action uh, in, it, in our loving him uh, with our all. This witness uh, and our response should be inseparable. Everybody say inseparable. inseparable. For no one can say that God is one without willingly giving their all to him. Why? Because half-heartedness is a sham. Many years ago, a songwriter once wrote these lyrics in a song that said, if he is not Lord of all, then he is not Lord at all. You see, the proclamation of the Shema is the true attitude. It is the true spirit of giving our all. Amen. Now, tonight we're not going to be running the aisles. But you see, we've got to understand, church, that this is more than just about clapping our hands. It's more about than just about jumping and shouting and running and dancing. Though I preached it this morning and I believe it. That's very, very important. And we do need to turn up the volume. And our it, turning up the volume is not just our outward worship. Uh, it is our inward and outward commitment. In other words, what we are here in the church house, uh, we need to be out there in God's house in his world. Amen. Amen. Because, you know, uh, in both the Old and the New Testaments, we read about the fire that came down from on high, falling upon a given sacrifice, whether it was on Mount Carmel before the prophet of, uh, you know, the prophets of Baal, or at the brazen altar, the tabernacle in the wilderness. It was the Almighty that answered by fire. Matter of fact, I, Elijah said, and the God that answereth by fire, let him be God. And as I stand here today, I'm still proclaiming that Jesus Christ is the one and only God of eternity. 
I don't think some of you heard me. Jesus Christ is the one and the only God of eternity. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. You know, there are only three religions on this entire globe that are monotheistic, which is the belief in one God. It's Islam, Judaism, and Christianity. But only in Judaism and Christianity do we understand that God is a spirit. Amen. How many of you know that God's in this room right now? You know that for a fact. We already talked about it. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. And the Bible tells us in John 4 and 24, it says God is a spirit. And they that worship him, how many are worshipers of that one God? They must, everybody say must, worship him in spirit and in what? Truth. In Hebrews, God is referred to as a flaming fire. Hebrews 12 and 29, for our God is a consuming fire. And we see examples of that. The appearance of God at Mount Sinai was that of fire. Thunders, lightning. God led Israel by a cloud and a pillar of what? Fire Fire at night. The prophet Jeremiah wrote in Jeremiah 29, but his word was in mine heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. Amen. That's why you never know where you're going and when you're out on your job. At any given time, if we're going to be the body of Christ, the church of the living God, then you know what? You and I need to understand that it's not about you and I. It's all about him. Because we need to give him our all, amen, and our love. So what do we need to do? We need to be sensitive. Everybody say sensitive. And now I know some people are really sensitive. You don't dare say one thing and they take offense to it. But I'm talking about sensitive to God. That in any given time that Jesus Christ, sister, can speak through you. Me? Yeah, you. And you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and everybody else. Because you never know. I'll never forget the story of, amen, of dear uh, Nona Freeman, amen, living there in Rose Pine, Louisiana. It was their first church that they passed. You probably have all heard this. But she, they were on the last house uh, outside of town. That preacher, he was pastoring there. Brother Freeman was pastoring there. And she was doing her dishes. And all of a sudden, the Spirit of the Lord moved on her. You've all heard this? Uh, the Spirit of the Lord moved on her and said, go out to your front porch, uh, amen, and just uh, take your dishes rag and wave it. Now you know what? If I'm going to live for God and love God with my all, I'm going to obey what he tells me to do. No matter how foolish it may seem to the human brain because God knows exactly what he's doing. And so she goes out there Amen. If you can pretend this is her dish rag. And she goes out there. She's on the front porch, the last house on the way out of town. And she's standing there going. And not one person goes down the street. Five minutes goes by. Ten minutes goes by. And you know what? If you keep this up, your arm gets tired. And she was getting a little unenthusiastic about it. And then all of a sudden, she saw a car coming down the street. Man, she got revived. And when that car went by, she went like this. And she said, well, what was all that about? 
a church. God is not obliging to tell you everything. But we are obliged to do everything he tells us to do. Amen. 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 I'm talking about the Shema. I'm talking about here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And if he's Lord, then that means he's my master. That means indeed that I need to obey his commands, uh, whether I understand them, uh, whether I think they're foolish or not. God calls the Freemans to Africa. They were missionaries in South Africa for many years. He was made the regional field supervisor of Africa. They were over there for 50 years. And they were on deputation. They were back in Rose Pine for a deputation service. And at the end of the service, this man comes up to Sister Freeman and says, Sister Freeman, you don't know who I am. But I used to be the town drunk. And I was one day in my car, and I was heading out of town with my shotgun on the seat. I was going to end it all that day. But when I passed the Pentecostal preacher's house, you were standing out on the, you were standing out on your porch, and you were raving, you were waving some kind of rag, amen. And you were, you were looking at me as if indeed you really meant it. And I thought, my God, if the Pentecostal preacher's wife loves me, then my God must love me and it brought him to the Lord only God can do that kind of thing hear O Israel I was asked to go to teach a revival in Watauga, Texas, in a little home missions church. And before I, when I got there, it was on a Tuesday. Revival was going to start on Wednesday. And uh, Pastor Coiner, he said, Brother Putnam, we got a new lady that's coming to our church. And uh, I said, great. She said, but yeah, she got baptized. But she's having a really rough time receiving the Holy Ghost. He said, would you mind tonight, we have Bible study with her tonight at the church. Would you mind tonight just uh, teaching her on the Holy Ghost? I said, well, I'll do anything you want me to do. I'm here to serve you this week, you know. And so we went. I never met this lady before. I did not know her from Adam. Amen. And uh, But I wanted to break the ice, you know. I don't know this sister either, but uh, I know you've got the Holy Ghost inside of you. And my name is Brother Putnam, and your name is? marveling god bless you what a beautiful name amen and you know what i went up to her that time and you know i'm going to be teaching her she doesn't know me i don't know her i wanted to make sure that we broke some ice there you know and so uh, I, I talked to her and she had two children with her and i said are these your two children she says yes i only have two children uh, and she gave me their names so we get into talking about the, the, the study of, you know, the Word of God. And we're talking about receiving the Holy Ghost. Uh, does anybody in here need the Holy Ghost? Praise God. Well, I'm telling you, if you need the Holy Ghost, tonight's a great night to get it. Praise God. So consequently, uh, amen, uh, we're, we're going on. And I said, ma'am, would you like to receive the Holy Ghost? She said, oh, yes, I would. And so we started praying. And absolutely nothing happened. She's keeping on praying. And I'm thinking, God, what's going on here? So I'm pacing back and forth in the sanctuary. Brother Coiner's in there, and, and uh, they're praying. And I'm praying. And, and the Lord spoke to me and said, she has an older daughter, but they don't get along. See, this is where our humanity comes into the picture, folks. Remember here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Amen. We are his body, and we need to do what he commands. Now, I was outside. I don't think I needed hearing aids then. I may know now, but uh, I don't think I needed hearing aids then, Brother Micah. But bless God, she said, these are my only two children, and I can count. That's one, two. So, I'm, I'm arguing. Well, God, I don't understand. She told me she only has two children. 
And you know, you know what? You know what our problem is? We are afraid that we're going to end up being embarrassed. Am I talking to anybody here tonight? Because we're afraid to speak forth what God wants us to speak forth. Now, I'm not saying everything that comes to your mind is God. But what I am saying uh, that we need to be able to distinguish the voice of God uh, from the devil and from our own mind. Uh, and the Bible says, uh, my church or my sheep know my voice. Uh, and when it's God, you got to know it's God. And you need to obey what God tells you to do. Amen. So consequently... I finally walked over there. I built up my faith. I thought, well, I can just always, you know, I can be, be wrong. And I went up to her and I said, ma'am, do you have an older daughter? The pastor immediately looked up at me and he went, He didn't know. And when I said, do you have an older daughter? She immediately jerked her head up and big tears are coming down her face. And she said, yes, I do. And we don't get along. And I said, ma'am, I don't want to know anything about it. But I'm coming here to tell you what God told me. You make that right with your daughter, and you'll have no problem receiving the Holy Ghost. Amen. She went home that night. She hadn't talked to her daughter in four or five years. And she went home that night and called her daughter. She reconciled with her daughter on the phone. They had a great conversation. And that next week, she was a tongue talker speaking in tongues. Why? Because I'm telling you, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. It's the spirit of giving our all. <laughs> I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Matter of fact, right now, would you just raise your hands? Hallelujah. Just raise your hands. Close your eyes. Hallelujah. You don't have to feel a thing. That doesn't change God. He knows exactly where you are right now. He knows exactly what you're going through. He knows exactly indeed what's happening in your life. He knows what your major concerns are. He knows where you failed. And he knows indeed where he wants to bless you. And somebody right now is going to stand up and receive that blessing in your life. And you're just going to stand up by faith and say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, church, he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we're able to even ask or even think according to the power that worketh in us. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. The Lord said through Isaiah, he said, for my thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways are not your ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. I'm telling you, church, we need to be a spirit-led church. We need to be a spirit-led church. Amen. I've heard of the book, Purpose Driven Church. Well, bless God, I don't want to be just purpose driven. I want to be spirit led. Amen. Praise God. My 
wife and I are reading a book right now. I'm not reading as fast as she is, but I should be. It's by an R.T. Kendall is the author's name. And the name of the book, the title of the book is The Power of Humility. The Power of Humility. You know, I'm sure you've seen that song every once in a while around here. It's, it's not unto us, but unto him be all the glory. It's not about us. It's all about him. But boy, when you know, sometimes when God uses us. Wow. I'll never forget in Germany. We had a healing service and a, the church came up. And I was just going down the, the, the row and praying for people. And I got to this one brother. And right before I put my hand on his head, I'm not kidding you folks. I felt too 40 electricity hit my hand. And when I touched his head, he went, bam. He just fell right on the floor. And what was sad about it, nobody even tried to catch him. Bam. Man, I went home that night. I was a young pastor. But then I, I read a scripture, and this has been about a decade ago, maybe. It says that we need to offer the sacrifice of praise. Now, I've been taught this, and again, I don't want to cross any theological hairs here. But the sacrifice of praise. Now, I've heard it taught, you know, well, bless God. I came to church tonight, and I had a... a uh, an ingrown toenail. And it hurt. But I still came to church tonight. Because I wanted to offer the sacrifice of praise. And bless God. I had a, a headache. But I still came to church tonight. Because I wanted to offer the sacrifice of praise. I don't think that that's what that means at all. But whenever God uses us. And he wants to use you. And he wants to use me. And some of you right now are thinking, well, maybe others, but not me. That's not true. Some of you say, maybe I'm too old. That, forget about that stuff. God can use us in the most unusual situations that you have ever dreamed of. But when he uses you, or when indeed... That some, you know, you preach a message and people come up to you and say, man, that was so good. And some of you were so kind today. But you know what? Before I go to bed tonight, you know what I'm going to say to God? I'm saying, God, those people at Cross Creek, they are such great people. And they were so kind to me and brother and sister Overton. But God, I just got to say tonight, uh, I am taking all of what they said and I am offering it up to you. Uh, the praises that they were praising me with, uh, I am offering up the sacrifice of praise uh, that you be all the glory, that you be all the honor, that you be all. Amen are all in all. Because here O oh Israel, the the Lord our God is one Lord. And you know what? When that happens, you put yourself in a position that God can use you again. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, church, the world needs the great I am through you. It can be one word of encouragement. It can be one handshake with a smile. It can be one situation, one situation that you pray for or indeed that you give to, amen, financially, and all of a sudden God intervenes in the situation, amen, and he does what nobody else can do. 
and that we give him all the honor and all the glory and all the praise forever and ever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. Enough of my rambling here. You see, God still has a body here on earth. And it's called the church. And we come into this house. We come into this assembly to learn, to be trained, to go forth and be the body of Christ. Isn't it easy to praise God like this morning? Boy, you know, we were all right there under that glory spout where the glory of God's coming out. And, and you know what? That hasn't changed here tonight. Because my Bible tells me we're two or three. You know, I wish we could get out of this still uh, that, you know, if everybody don't show up, then we can't have real good church. Uh, are you kidding me? Uh, amen. The Bible says two or three. Whether there's two or three, God will be in the midst of you if you've assembled together. And all you got to do is lift up your hands, all ye people. Uh, all you got to do is shout, uh, amen, from your heart and God. God will be there. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. He wants to use you. Hallelujah. How about it, Abraham? Take thy son, thy only son, and offer him up as a burnt sacrifice. Boy, it's easy to preach. But you know what? The body the one that understood the Shema was willing to give his all. You know, sometimes I think we literally pray ourselves out of our blessings. Some of you don't understand that. Because we meet situations that are out of our control and we think that God ought to fix it. And you know what? God might need to know that you need to go through some things and just trust him and let him be glorified when you see the end result of what all and he alone could do without trying to boss God of what he should do. I hope this is all right, Pastor. How about Job? <laughs> Job, the most perfect man. And look at everything he went through. And God knew all about it. And God allowed him to go through it. Because God had a trust in Job. Because God knows everything. But when he went through it, Oh, yes, he did a lot of complaining. I'm sure there's nobody in this room, including myself, that ever complains. Well, I haven't complained in the last hour. But, you know, when we get pressurized, we become a very complaining people. Church, we haven't seen nothing yet. Hello? Jesus is coming again, and he is coming soon. I believe that with all of my heart. So, well, Brother Putnam, when's it going to be? Well, if I knew that, nobody would believe me anyways. But I don't know that because the word of God tells me I won't know that. But he did tell us to look at the signs of the times. And he's coming again. And that's what behooves us. 
that hear, O Israel, and love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy mind, thy soul, and thy strength. <laughs> know the word of God. I, I, I'm very, very proud of your pastor in his endeavor to start a Purpose Institute campus right here at Cross Creek. I really am. Amen. I tell you, it will transform this church. But you know what? If you're satisfied with what you know in God and you don't need to know anything else and you know you know it all and everything and you're just in it for the, you know, the emotion and, and everything. No, my friend, you know, the Bible says my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Amen. Not only is the world getting more knowledge, we need to have more understanding of what God is able to do and why he does it. So I'm telling you, as you feel unctioned by God's spirit, don't hold back. Uh, say, well, I don't have that kind of money. My friend, you got all the money that you, whatever you want to spend for. That is the truth. If you're willing to make sacrifice so you can learn more about the word of God, uh, do you think God's going to let that go semester after semester without you getting the blessing as a result? Uh, of course. Why? Because you're showing him, Lord, I want to give you my all because of the Shema. Some of you got real quiet then. I'm going to finish with this. You know, if we're not careful, we can start our own little Holy Ghost fire. Well, excuse me. We can start our own little fire and we can live in the sparks of our own fire and think all the time that it's God. What are you talking about, Brother Penham? I'm going to read it to you. This is found in Numbers chapter 16 and verse 18. Numbers 16 and 18. It says, And they took every man his censer and put fire in them and laid incense thereon and stood in the door of the tabernacle of the congregation with Moses and Aaron. And Korah, have you ever heard about Korah? What did he do? He rebelled against the man of God, right? He had a better idea. He was going to do it his way. And Korah, look at this, verse 19. And Korah gathered all the congregation against them unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the congregation. You see, Korah was fixing his own fire. He was going to do it his way. He was going to have it. Now, I know what Burger King says. You know, Hertz tells us that you're number one. McDonald's is loving it. Burger King says, have it your way. Our whole world is geared to the gratification of this flesh. And if we're not careful, we can get swept up in that stuff. And all of a sudden think, well, really, this is all about me. No, my friend, it will never be about you and I. This is all about him. I'm here tonight because of his grace. I'm here tonight because of his blood. I'm here tonight because of his sacrifice. I'm here tonight because of his word. I'm here tonight because of his grace and his love and his goodness. Can I get a witness from somebody? Amen. That we are his kids. Isaiah said this in 50, verse 10. He said, who is among you that feareth the Lord, that obeyeth the voice of his servant, that walketh in darkness and hath no light? Let him trust in the name of the Lord and stay 
upon his God. That we trust him when we don't feel him. We trust him when we don't see him. We trust him when things are not necessarily going the way we think that they should be going. That we just stay in the darkness because he is the light. And he will bring us forth to his glorious light every time. But this is what he said, verse 11. He said, behold, that means take account of. All ye that kindle a fire that can pass yourselves about with sparks. Walk in the light of your fire and in the sparks that ye have kindled. This shall ye have of mine hand and ye shall lie down in sorrow. In other words, if we insist on just having it our way and we're not going to be led by his spirit, then guess what? We will dance in our own sparks rather than being engulfed with the consuming fire of God, of his blessings and love, because God wants his church to love him with all of his, of our lives, our soul, our heart. Let us stand tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, God. The musicians, if you would come. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. When I was a missionary in Germany, I was a missionary to our American servicemen and to the nationals there in Germany. And it was obvious we were going to have to come home by some unforeseen circumstance. And I went to that military chapel early in the morning. It was about 3.30 or 4 in the morning. And I felt so low I could have probably crawled under these carpet, to this carpet, not even made a lump as I went. I felt that low. And I was walking back and forth. And you know what? I was just feeling, I was feeling sorry for myself. Now I'm supposed to, none of you do that, but. And I was just walking back and forth. Come here, Michael. I want you to be me. Because I was a lot younger then. Just walk. Just like you're praying, like you're burdened. Wipe that smile off your face. And I was just, I was pacing. The devil sent a bumblebee. I'm not kidding you. That was about that big in that chapel. I mean, I was so distracted. I finally went to the back door of the chapel and I said, Bumblebee, in the name of Jesus Christ, get out of here. God is my witness. Well, big deal, Pastor. Feeling as low as I was feeling, that was a big deal. I was just walking back and forth. Woe is me. And all of a sudden, I turned around and I felt a hand come over my shoulder to the point that I even turned around. There was nobody. <laughs> Nobody. And he said, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Every head bowed tonight and every eye closed. I'm telling somebody tonight, whatever you're going through, it's going to be okay. You just need to love God with all of your heart, 
with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and realize, amen, that here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Hallelujah. And God wants to help you. He wants to help you right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to bring your burden right now. Somebody needs to bring your burden to an old-fashioned altar once again. I'm telling you, it don't matter what other people might think right now, but it matters what God's telling you what to do. And lift up your hands to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, God. Here I am, O oh Lord. Here I am, O oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Oh, is everything going okay? Everything all right? Hallelujah, Jesus. How about the time coming back from a Bible study on the Audubon there in Germany? I was had my cruise control on at 95 miles an hour. No speed limit on the Audubon. It was real late at night. Brother Amrut was sitting in the front seat in shotgun, a young man from India. Brother Jerry Lawrence was sitting behind the back seat from Pakistan. And I fell asleep at the wheel of the car. I know where I went to sleep. And I know where I woke up. And I looked at Brother Amrut and I said, Brother Amrut, I think I went to sleep. (laughs) I looked at him and his eyes were this big. He said, Brother Putnam, we were heading for semi-truck. And he said, all of a sudden the car went. I got home that night, I was so tired. I prayed and I thought, thank God that I wasn't being brought home in a box. But that next day, that next day, there I was with Brother Mike again. I was just pacing in our, our condo there, back and forth in our living room. And I got to the front door to our balcony, and then I made a turn. And when I made that turn, there was something I could not see with my eyes. But it was so holy that was standing in front of me. I could not stand up any longer. And I fell to my knees and my face was buried in our carpet. I was speaking in tongues like I've never spoken in tongues before nor since. Amen. And I'm telling you, there was such a presence. Amen. I'm telling you, folks, I don't know why I'm saying all these things right now, but some of you are facing some stuff. Amen. And you just think that it's just hard luck time on you. But somebody needs to come to the altar tonight. Somebody needs to really unburden your soul tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, would you come on? Just obey God. Hear, O Israel! Hear, O Israel! The Lord is one. Hallelujah, Jesus.
Hallelujah. 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 Surrender it all tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need healing tonight. Come on.
said, Jesus, we surrender all to you, O Lord. Sing it one more time. If you 
can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Sing it to the Lord at the prayer tonight. Lift your hand and sing it to him. You can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Speak to me If you can use anything, Lord You can use me Now what I want you to do is I want you to close your eyes Lift your hands to heaven and ask God Hallelujah To use you, amen And to also tell him I'm going to give you all my heart All my mind, all my soul And all my strength, Lord Father, tonight we lift our voice and we lift our hands in praise to you. We're grateful for your power and your presence that we feel in this place. Lord, we ask you tonight, God, use us for your glory and use us for your kingdom. Oh, God, I give you all my heart. I give you all my mind. I give you all my soul. I give you all my strength tonight, oh God. Use me for your glory. Have your will in my life. Have your way in my soul. Let your blessings be upon your people, God. Let your anointing be upon them. Let your will be accomplished in them and through them. In the name of Jesus. Now give him some praise. Give him thanks tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for what I feel in my soul tonight, God. 